Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the care and propagation of the philodendron black cardinal. Apologies for the renovation noise. It's been happening day in, day out, but I'm, I'm glad because the economy is running again. I believe it's the end of COVID. Cross my fingers. Um, but yeah, anyways, this is a really beautiful plant. It's better viewed up top. So it doesn't really look good when it's flat on a table like this. Uh, this makes a really good landscaping plant and it's actually really well known for its burgundy, red and black leaves. There's almost no green at all on this philodendron. Really, really beautiful, really underrated. Uh, I do have a little bit of complaints for this plant though. It's, uh, they actually can get a little bit of a fungal spots on their leaves. It's quite easy to get them and also hard water stains. So if you have hard water, you may not want to get the leaves wet at all. Ever since I moved to this new home, I've been watering, just hosing it down and it's perfectly clean leaves. But back in my dad's place, actually, the leaves would get a lot of these white mineral buildups. So just keep that in mind. And I have used my insecticidal bar soap before to wash this plant. In fact, this is one of the demonstration plants that I use for my soap because it's got so much of these white uh, hard water stains. So yeah, if you really want this plant to be clean, you may have to uh, you know, use cleaner water or just never get the leaves wet. If you have this indoors, just water the soil level. And this makes such a beautiful indoor plant, you guys. This is so nice. Very, very underrated, highly affordable, hues of reds and burgundies in there. Very, a lot of depth, basically. This is a plant that not many people talk about. And I'm a sucker for these burgundy red type plants. Um, but really quickly about the care, they actually like to be in very, very bright light. I would say a little bit of direct sunlight will do them much good. They have grown faster in those light conditions and given me more redder foliage. I believe the new foliage will be a little bit red, but then it would, of course, uh, fade over time into this dark green, almost black color. So yeah, give it very good light. It is not by any means a low light plant. And this is a plant that actually grows in a rosette pattern. I should have mentioned it in the intro. They are not a philodendron that likes to clamber uh, long distances or you know go up a moss pole or wall or tree. They just want to stay compact and rosette-like. And a little bit of history of this plant. I know I'm all over the place today. A little bit of history. I actually lost this plant many times, uh, but then because it died so many times, it's given me multiple vines here. It's got two main vines, but I see a lot of this little growth point coming up. This little baby plant down here, I just noticed that. So yeah, rosette type plants usually are quite fun to propagate only because they can push out so many vines from these little areas that you give it. But this plant is about two years old. It's one of my first few plants. And yeah, again, it's been, I believe I killed it maybe twice. So it's been, you know, back and forth, uh, which is why it's not that big. Uh, grown in terracotta pot, arid, uh, chunky arid potting mix, so, because you don't want to overwater this. Uh, this is a plant that really doesn't need too much water. Uh, so if you have severely overwatered it, which I have, you'll notice a lot of the leaves in the bottom will turn yellow quickly and then fall off. Of course, leaves always die. They will always have an expiration date, so they'll turn yellow. But then if you see a rapid decline, do check it for overwatering and not really that pest prone. You want to water them according to the light level and the potting mix that you give it. The trick is to get them completely dry between watering. In fact, I've forgotten to water these many times and they've just been fine. So keep it on the underwater side if I were you. See the thick stem here and the, the leaves are actually quite thick. They don't need a lot of water. They may suffer from overwatering. So yeah, keep this underwater. I just can't help looking at how gorgeous this architectural form is <laughs> down here. But uh, fertilize is the same with your other house plants. I think the care is actually relatively simple. I would rate this an easy philodendron to care for. And yeah, without further ado, let's just chop this plant up and we'll maybe learn a few tricks on how to propagate philodendrons from here because I see so many growth points here. This is going to be an interesting plant. So look at all these aerial roots that is put out. Actually, this plant would appreciate a little bit of uh, sphagnum moss action down here or to, if you want to grow this out into a massive plant, which actually a lot of people do, they look really nice as a massive rosette plant. Uh, what you want to do is just bury it this deep uh, and in potting mix and then these roots will turn into regular soil roots and then it will just push up more and more vines and all these babies here um, that are close-ups I don't know they will all grow into these so this has a chance to become like a bush basically very very nice plant actually this is how I seen them in nurseries actually in a, ma a massive specimens I guess first I'm going to unpot this 
This has been living here for many years. Two years, I think. I have not repotted it. Uh, yeah, it is very root bound. <laughs> but look at the roots, even the roots are red. Like, yeah. Very root bound. Very nice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> really appreciate this plant a lot. Let me first break this down into pieces. Two plants. So let me show you what I did. So basically it was like this and I just cut this, this off. That's a logical thing to do, right? And then let me see. Try to get as much roots as possible. There are actually, if you are conservative, you can actually just plant this and it's got some growth point here. This will be a pretty nice uh, plant to have. But knowing me, of course I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> Technically speaking, you can just cut this off and cut it. And then this should uh, sprout into its own thing. But let me do this cut. And I'll tell you why. So uh, basically, I cut it like this. It's bleeding, look at that. It's bleeding. <laughs> Uh, so I, it was like that, but I cut it like this. Let me show you the bottom cutting. There's some growth point here. I see another one back here, another growth point. So, and it's got uh, two sets of areas. So this is technically speaking, this is a two node cutting. There's a, a line here. And a node is where a leaf used to live, but a leaf has died. So it's got the potential to push out new vines. So this hopefully will give me two new vines. But let me get some activated charcoal, uh, just activated charcoal powder and I'm going to rub the wound with it so that I don't really, uh, what do you call this, have any infection going on. It's going to reduce the incidence of that. And then let me actually pot things up one by one. Alright, so I'm going to squeeze all this root into this one little pot. It's going to be super trippy to watch. We <laughs> try not to break it. I find it is, it's better to just turn the plant, turn it and twist it as you put it in. And then uh, this is ready for the gen uh, for the aeroid potting mix because it's already got so much healthy roots. So it looks like that in there. So I'm just gonna put some aer uh, aeroid potting mix. All right, so it's nice and stuck, snug in there. But as you can see, there's a little bit of aerial roots here that is sticking out. And I do want this to develop into real roots. So there's a trick for that. I basically just top dress it with a little bit of moss. And that's it, that should form into regular roots. I'm gonna make sure that the growth points here, this is the growth point, it's facing up so that it can find its way into freedom. And lightly water this. It's rainy season now, so I don't really want to leave this out in the rain. So yeah, it doesn't need a lot of water. It just needs humidity now, actually. And I think a good idea was just to, to water this a little bit and then put a ceram wrap on top to just seal in the humidity. That would be a very good idea, but I've never really done that. It's not, I don't have the patience for those um, setups. And this here, right here, actually, you know what? I'm going to keep this as it is, although you can probably cut it into more plants. As you can see, there are many nodes here, but yeah, that's a little growth point here and it's bleeding on my hand. <laughs> Look at all this blood. Uh, I'm going to seal the wound here. And then let me see, do I? Uh, sometimes if you have this many leaves and you have only this little number of roots, you can take a bit of leaves off. And it's advisable to do it. Otherwise, the leaf may drag the whole plant down into death because there's not enough roots to support so many leaves uh, here because each leaf they do need water don't, don't forget that and also they're trying to push out a new growth points here so I might have nipped this a little bit uh, sorry I was a little bit rough but this has a, what you call an apical bud so the new leaf will actually come up from here from the from the top center here unless I compromise this unless I cut this off then the leaf would appear down here so I just give it a long uh, longer pot here and also I can also monitor the moisture level in the potting mix make sure that it's not too wet in there again the trick is just to keep it lightly humid in there and not over water this is becoming quite a party down here this is very feisty what's going on back here there's so many babies I may have accidentally broke this off but this can probably grow this right here this is a growth point it should have enough energy in this little thing to push out a baby but do I wanna, do I wanna do this? Hang on. Because I have so many pots lying around, I wouldn't remember um, which ones are my rescue. So I may just do this, but I'm gonna forget about it, of course, because I have so many videos for you guys. So I'm gonna put a bit of moss in here and then just tuck this baby right in there. See, see that? And, uh, yeah. 
It's like a little clog. <laughs> Alright, I'm totally going to forget where I put this guy. <laughs> but it's worth trying. I don't know. If I remember, I remember. So here's the thing. There there's used to be many nodes here where the plant leaves used to be. And all of these has the potential to put out all these vines. But if I cut off the top, it's going to focus all its energy on these babies. So it's going to be growing so fiercely. So it's a good idea to cut it off. So let me cut it and cut it first. All right, so let me show you where I made the cut. Okay, of course, I can't really separate this. The roots are kind of entangled. Ah. Uh, all right, so we're going to deal with this one later. This is turning into a long video and it's an interesting one too. But look at that. Look at this. There's so many things going on in here. And I can turn this into so many plants. Look at all these nodes. Each of these lines represents a node. So I'm going to be very greedy. I'm going to be super greedy. But I'm going to show you each cut so you know exactly what I did. This is the bottom cut. It's got one growth point here, but it should have more because there are more than one lines here. There should be some dormant growth point here. I'm going to make sure that I remember to put some charcoal on top. Yeah, I'm gonna pot this up. This is ready for aeroid potting mix, by the way, because it's already got so many roots. And continuing on upwards. Um, this, this right here, do I wanna mess with this? No, I don't wanna mess with this. I wanna let this grow out. But technically, you can pluck this off and then grow it on its own. But for this one here, I may do that. Let's look at that. It's already got its own set of roots down here. And let me show you the other side. It's better. See, it's got its own. And it's it's got its own set of aerial roots here. So I'm gonna cut this off. Ah, I broke off something, something interesting. Okay. This is actually an exciting propagation. I broke this off. But look at this. Even though I broke it off, I think that's a growth point trying to appear and it's got its own set of roots here. So this will turn into a plant. And this is what we cut off earlier from the side shoot. Let's take this off, take the sheath off there so yeah something's trying to grow out of this amazing then i want to keep everything in very very tight pots so i don't really overwater it and i don't really have to deal with so many past fungus issues all right so this is the bottom most cut not all right so this is the bottom cut and as you can see many vines here many nodes and look at all these roots this is important the number of roots here will determine uh, how much plant material we may have later, how many uh, uh, vines we will have. So technically speaking, this right here, this is the mother plant. And I'm going to put this in aeroid potting mix and terracotta pot so I don't really overwater it. And then moving on up, this one. Look at that. This is trying to push out something here. So naturally, I'm going to cut, cut it off. I haven't had this much fun in propagation in a long... I mean, all propagations are fun. This is extremely fun. I don't know why. This is a very good session that we have. So this is what the cutting looks like and that's the roots. Uh, the bottom part dried off. Actually, you want to cut it off if it's dried or rotted off because you don't want to have... Uh, you don't want to have it turn into rot, which can happen. If this uh, is dry, again, or mushy, just cut it off. Cut it off. Because if it's uh, rotted in there, it's going to spread on, onto the stem. And from where you make the cut earlier for the, on the roots, you may want to dip it in a bit of uh, this uh, activated charcoal. And this right here, because this doesn't have a lot of roots here, is going into moss. Just like that. Gently tuck it in. Don't, don't compact the moss. You don't need to. Moving on down. This, you know what, I may actually leave this alone. Or do I want to cut? Hang on. Yeah, I want to leave this alone, I guess. This one was accidentally cut. Look at all this blood. Ugh. Ah, look at that. This poor thing, I'm so sorry I made the cut accidentally. But yeah, I may leave this alone because as you can see the notes here are getting very really close together. You, I can technically cut here if I wanted to. Do you see above this leaf? And then uh, the top here would have some roots. But I don't know, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna do that. Am I gonna do it? Do I wanna do it? Vote now. Uh, yeah, I might just do it. I might do it. It's super indecisive, right? 
Okay, yeah, no turning back. No regrets. Oh my god, of course I, I cut this leaf off by accident. And then don't forget to seal the wound, seal it fast. Before I forget to look at this little growth point here. This should become its own leaf, but I see some there should be some nodes here, hopefully. Um, this one's also a growth point. So I see two growth points here and decent amount of roots. I'm going to grow this in here. All right, so this top cutting here, it's got only a little bit of roots, as you can see, and it's like long shooting down, so I need to give it a tall pot. Uh, but also, because it's got very uh, little roots for this many leaves, I'm going to take one leaf off. I'm gonna take this one off and I'm gonna cut it, cut it off. All right, so I'm gonna pot, uh, I'm gonna put some potting mix in here, and then I will show you the family portrait. All right, so we've got quite a lot actually. So we've got two top cuttings here, uh, one and two with the apical bud. This is a midsection cutting. Uh, I'm trying to adjust it there. And then that's one which is the stump. And then there's these guys here, hanging there, little fellas. And these guys that we saw earlier with the little cloth just sticking out of the aeroid potting mix. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten pots out of one. Let's see how many, I, this is not, doesn't belong to the family. So let's see how many we end up with at the end of the uh, next few months. Bye. Welcome to a one month update. This is the parent plant. It's given me, I think, two vines out of this. I'm gonna give it more time. I need to be careful not to overwater this. This one I'm a little bit worried about because it looks like it's very wet. Oh yeah, it's mush. This is mush. This is done. Yeah, so I had an event. So everything was moved around and these were uh, on the floor because we had to take this shelf to the event. So yeah, this was just rained on for a few days. So that's done. And let me see, this one has put out a new growth here, but I'm worried about the roots. So I'm gonna check on the roots. This one is a little bit worrisome too because it's very, very wet. Look at how wet the moss is. This is not how wet the moss should ever, ever be when you're propagating. They should be light brown, just slightly humid. So I'm gonna check on these on the table. A few of the others are also over water, so I'm gonna check on them in a minute. And this one right here, this is doing all right. This has put out a, a new vine here, and I do need to check the roots. But I don't know what where everybody else is. I think these are all different species because everything got mixed up during the move. I had some people to help me move. Oh, I did see a, another vine. If you see this teeny tiny little thing coming out of the bottom in the center of the screen, that's a new vine. These guys, they really hate water, you guys. The philodendra black cardinal, they really want to be in the underwater tide. All right, so I brought everybody that I can find. I'm not sure where there, if there are any more that, that is lost in the collection, but look at this wall of Hoya caudata behind me. They're so pretty. It's just a wall of them. The new leaves are beautiful red look at that oh my goodness all right i'm gonna start unpotting things uh to kind of check for root rot and how to treat them i guess that's important right so this one for sure it's mush look at this this is mush but there's oh my god there's two do you see that there's two growth point here i need to save this i need to save this guy all right so here we go i'm gonna try to cut as many off as possible. This is severely overwatered. Uh, I'm also still teaching my new guy here who's running the cows how to care for plants. I'm really approaching this in a in a new way where uh, I'm hiring people who can actually work. Don't get me, they're very very hard working but I have a lot of adjustments I need to make to my lifestyle. Like I'm not used to having people around me all the time. Look at this, this is very nice. And then they're not that passionate about plants because these are these are not their plants right these are just like my plants just in their eyes that's how they see it and then for them this is just a job a task that they need to do they need to water it they need to you know so it's hard like when when you need to hire someone when you hire someone to take care of plants they need to have love and understanding and curiosity for these living things because they're not easy to take care of you know, so this is how they want to be. Squeeze all the water out and this is just light and fluffy and keep it like that. Do not get it get, let it get too wet or compacted with water. Let me check on the others. I have a pretty good feeling, even though this is my aeroid potting mix, you see how, uh, what do you call it, how airy and chunky it is. 
I think also there's a combination of rain, but also <laughs> look at this is all mush. I can feel it. This is all mushy. It's a combination of rain and also this uh, gardener probably watered it every day. Uh, yeah. So when it's mushy like that, you just want to keep cutting it up, like up and up until you see fresh root. In this case, I don't think. Yeah. Let me try to feel it. This may be a little bit of healthy roots, but I don't know. That's just no. I'm just gonna cut the whole thing off, and then I'm gonna dip a little bit of uh, activated charcoal powder where I make the cut, and then you know what? I'm gonna put it in the same moss as this one. I'm gonna let it recover in moss. I'm really glad though that they put out these little babies before it rotted off because if I kept it like this for too long, if I didn't pay attention, the babies would rot off too. You need to keep an eye out for your cuttings. They're very delicate at this point. All right, this is mush too. Very, very mushy. This one root is still doing okay. The ones in the lower node here, this is done. Cut it off before it spreads to the main stem. So basically root rot is like an infection. It does spread if you don't uh, treat it. So these are the only healthy roots that are left. This is pretty, very, very solid. This is fine, I think. And you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna put this back into its own pot. And I'm, I really don't want to water this for the next, I don't know, a few days. And just so you know, when you have long aerial roots like this, uh, it's generally safe to put it directly into a potting mix and just propagate it, but you need to keep the potting mix relatively dry. Humid, but dry. Otherwise, there's a lot of surface area for rot. Or another idea is to just cut off the aerial roots when you're propagating it, so you only have like about this length. That's all you need, actually, to start a new plant. So I need to really, really really watch out for these it actually takes a lot of time too when i'm training um yeah this is done look at this this is basically i'm gonna squeeze it just yeah there it's disintegrated it's really uh you know a lot of plants have died in their care i don't really blame them fully for this i guess it's a learning process for me too maybe i do need to hire a professional to do this but there's another issue when you have someone who, who is a, a professional. Most people in Indonesia, this is the one that we touched earlier as mush. Most people in Indonesia are actually, I don't want to shame my own country, but there's a lot of dishonest people here. It's very difficult to trust people with, with uh, valuable things. And this has got to do with the culture, with the education system, and with the government. Oh my God, I'm going to get in so much trouble for saying all this. But with the government not really taking care of the citizens that well, there's, corru there's corruption everywhere, don't get me wrong, there's corruption in every nation. But, you know, um, here it's also very apparent. Yeah, this, is, this looks fine. I was going to pull it out to check it, but I felt a few of the roots there. And I'm fine. I just need to back off with watering for this. But yeah, it's a country that is still figuring things out, basically, right? So its citizens aren't, you know, the business ethics isn't that good. Um, Thefts are common among employees. Most people who work here in office jobs, this is actually very wet, but it's not mush yet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be okay, I think. Some of the secondary roots are very mushy, but the main, is it mushy yet? It's about to get mushy, I can feel it. And you know what, I'm not gonna risk it. I have a feeling that it's still very solid now, but I don't know, man, do I wanna keep it like, I don't know, something tells me that I wanna cut it off, cut the whole thing off. But you know what, I'm gonna, this is mush, look at this, the lower stem here, this is too wet. Um, yeah, what was I gonna say? People here who work in offices, generally speaking, even though, you know, they're getting decent salary, they, they are still getting secondary jobs. Most people here have a side job, have a side business, because the income from working from someone else is just too low here. So there's no way that anyone could survive with um, office salary. So yeah, it's a really, really interesting culture. I think Philippines is very similar. I don't know how to fix that, but it's, it's very, it, again, com thefts and dishonest employees is a very, very common thing here. It's, it's a tricky place. But of course, a lot of foreign companies are coming here to do business because there is still a lot of opportunity. The economy is doing well. There's a growing population here uh, of like young, you know, the, the children, I mean, the population here is really, really exploding and the, the future children will be uh, contributing to the workforce and also for the spending, you know, for the, for the spending things, like, like your markets, your digital uh, economy and all that is gonna do really well in the future. Yeah, challenging place, but also interesting. <laughs> That's what I'm saying for Indonesia.
yeah, this is actually very wet. I wouldn't water this for the next few days. I think I, I may actually keep these indoors just because I don't think they should be outside for now. And this is what's worrisome. Oh my God, this video is gonna turn into like a few hours long. This is the top cutting and I was really hoping it will do well, but nope, look at that. So the outer, outer sheath of the, of the root is come off and this is the sign of rot. This is very, very rotten. So uh, yeah, I need to cut this off. But look at all these new growth points that are trying to come out from here. So I don't know what to do. Let me see. Um, one thing I could do is water propagate, but there's no nodes coming out. So you know what? This is going to be very difficult for you to watch, but I'm going to take this off. And the reason is because there's no roots to support so many leaves. This is trying to put out a new leaf here. And there's no roots and this cutting need to support this growing eye, this growing eye. But all these leaves are also uh, needing water, nutrients and energy. So the best way to do is to cut it off and I'm gonna leave only one for photosynthesis. And this is a very, very, very delicate cutting. I may lose this, but let's see. The best way forward for this, in my experience, is going to probably be, be moss. And again, keeping it very, very airy, very light, because this is not liking water. This species particular, I guess, dark leaf dendrons, like the pink princess as well, they really don't want to be in water. And rain is not good for them. And it's really interesting, I've been doing a, quite a bit of nursery tours lately, and I've been noticing that a lot of the nurseries now are using closed, what do you call this? They're using closed uh, tent. So the, the top of the roof is covered. So rainwater that don't, don't get to the plants. This is very different from the, the model that I'm used to before, where in the nurseries everything's open and then you can get your plants rained on. Rainwater is good. Oh my God, I'm babbling on. Rainwater is actually very good for the plant, but I think people are learning that a lot of plants actually don't survive. A lot of cuttings don't. A lot of the established plants actually love it. But yeah, this is mush too. I just pulled it right out. Cut it off. Actually, water propagating this may also be a good idea to just dip, dip it in water so that the new vines can come out. But I'm just gonna do moss this time because I have so much going on. But yeah, just so you know, they can also be rehabbed in water. All right, so I'm gonna rehab this. I'm gonna give you guys another update. I'm sure I'll have something that survived out of this, but I do need to uh, remedy the way that I've been propagating this. And when you have so many root rot, you're actually setting back the, the total process of propagation. This is setting you back a lot. So this is about two weeks later, and I actually cut this off. This leaf is completely limp, and it's gone. So this is the top cutting. I can see some growing eye down here, and this is the apical bud, but I don't think it will take off. It is so dehydrated. And one of the reasons is because it's got no roots, so it is pretty much dying. It is dehydrating. Uh, so the best thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of this moss, and then I'm gonna plug it into this water vessel and let it kind of water propagate. Hopefully that will rehydrate and push out some of these uh, growing eye here. And the main stem here and also the patio actually has some chlorophyll, so it can still photosynthesize at this time. But the chances of it surviving is actually really, really low. It may rot before it put out those shoots. The parent plant seems to be doing okay. The leaves are getting bigger and bigger. Look at this tiny little baby leaf here. And then this one here is doing all right. It's a tiny little one. And this is the other top cutting. It's also not doing so well. Let me try to take it. But it's doing uh, better than the others. Uh, let's check out the roots. And there is... I think the roots have dried out actually. Yeah, these are, this is rot or dried out. And I know that actually this has been kept completely dry because my, my gardener, he has failed to water this many times and I sometimes have to water it myself because the moss is just completely dry. So I don't know, man, this is turning out to be a disaster of propagation. So I'm gonna have to water this a little bit more and you know what, hang on. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut this leaf off and I'm gonna finish it in water. Let me feel if the... Yeah, the main stem here is still pretty solid. But as you can see, the roots fell right off. So, yeah. I think I'm just gonna do water at this time. Here's a three months update and probably our final one. So I ended up with many, many plants. There's actually, I see two, maybe more. Look at the little leaves in there. Uh, I ended up with a lot of plants. This is probably gonna get very bushy. 
if I just kept growing it out, which is good. These guys look good in a beautiful bushy rosette growth pattern. Let me see this one. This one also turned out uh, to be quite bushy. Look at all these babies here. There are a lot, a lot of them. I see spider web, but I don't see any spider mites, so it's fine. I think this is just predator predatory uh, spiders. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to separate these because actually if you watch my other blogs, you'll know that I'm trying to reduce the number of pots in my garden. So I'm just going to grow these out. And yeah, again, this is a, a bit of a fiasco here. I overwatered everything, but you keep in mind they do bounce back very quickly. And again, if you want to get many, many plants out of this, this is the right way to propagate it. So this is the parent plant, if I'm not wrong. So it's pushing out many, many vines. It looks like a tissue culture. Yeah, because when you tissue culture plants, you end up with clumps like this. So yeah, I'm not gonna be separating these. They're not worth a lot of money, so I'm not gonna be selling them either. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I may give the little one away to someone, but I have a feeling that they are kept in a little bit of a uh, too bright of a light because they're giving me these lighter colored leaves. And I remember the original leaves were a lot darker, so I may actually place these in a lower light situation. They're getting a bit of direct sunlight here actually. The sun is coming from where I'm shooting now. It's coming at an angle from the, uh, what is this, southwest? Sorry, this is nor northwest. It's hitting it directly. So I need to find another place for this. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Thank you so much for watching. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you wanna DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye.